Helper with Ballots for Bernie. We are live talking with John Brakey of Audit Arizona. John um, is a longtime activist and election integrity advocate, democracy advocate, who has been for 12 years now looking at gaps in our election systems, of which there are far too many and really doing some hard-nosed research to find out what's going on. So we're delighted to have him here, because he was also in Wisconsin. Just as a review about, gosh, was that three and a half weeks ago, Jill Stein announced that she was going to call for a recount and collected $2.5 million in 12 hours and ultimately $7 million to pay for recounts in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. And there's some other act has been some other activity in Nevada, which we will hear more about. We'll do another interview with our weekly live streams about Nevada. I hope this later this week talking to people who are on the ground there. And we have a lawsuit. Uh, I'm not sure what the status was, but Clint Curtis started a lawsuit in Florida to try to free up the ballots there. They operate under separate rules in Florida. Uh, my understanding was the Secretary of State has to approve of any recount, and I guess, I believe Clint was trying to sue to get that started. In the meantime, the Pennsylvania recounts really haven't gone very far. A federal judge stopped them in Michigan and in Wisconsin, John Brakey is going to give us an update on, on what happened there. But I'm going to start off. Uh, good afternoon, John. How are you doing? Hey, doing good, Jim. It's good to, to be with you again. It's good to be with you. First of all, let, let's get started. What were the red flags that you saw the in Wisconsin, the, the, the problems that give you an idea that something, there might be anomalies there. What, what, what caught your attention? What caught my attention immediately was the night I flew in, there was a court hearing and we were preparing. We had a crowd of several hundred people to do a teaching of how the process was supposed to work. And uh, first off, you know, uh, I was invited in by Bob Petrakis, who's a Green member out of Ohio, who's close to Jill. And uh, and, and I, I want to thank, you know, uh, Trust Vote, Lori Grace, Recount Now, what phenomenal people in that group that worked with us and friends uh, for many years. And uh, and also Brett Kimball and, and others that we came together to try to get some of the best investigators in the country on the ground there. And so I wound up bringing in two teams working with these other groups and, of course, Audit AZ. And one team was, of course, our, our friend, longtime friend, Jim March Simpson. And Jill Simpson's one team. And then I was able to uh, buddy up with a guy who was probably one of the best lawyers in the country, Chris Souter. He's the one... We'll put it this way, he's been doing elections since 84, and we felt that it would be really good to have somebody with his credibility and knowing how these counts are done to help judge it with us just because of his vast experience that he has. And so we hit town, I guess it was on a Tuesday night, and uh, uh, Thursday's when things counted. Tuesday night we uh, were able to get to the meeting, do some presentations, teach people, had a live broadcast, which... Uh, just a lot of great people that were involved that came in to do this recount. And so then we set the boiler room up the next day, working with several local people. Uh, and then on Thursday, that's when we, we were in Dane County, Madison, and we were able to observe the procedures of the hand count that they do. And I, and I want to touch into these procedures because, you know, uh, Wisconsin does things really good. It was also a very good clue to us to say, okay, now that we know how they're doing this, now we're going to focus on the suspects because when we first rolled into town, I had 72 suspect counties. Okay. Where am I going to look? What am I going to do? And, you know, when you who look at elections, I've learned for 12 years that elections are about procedures and, and procedures are important. And, uh, and once you see these procedures in play, 
I look at those procedures and I try to find out where the system has impunity because that is where elections are manipulated, is that some procedures really are built into the system to cheat. Uh, a good example would be, oh, oh, uh, gee, you can hand count if you want or you can machine count if you want, okay? And the hand count counties, the way they do these procedures, they do a really good job. And, and I really... Sorry about that. Uh, damn it, did we lose it? No. Are you there? Yeah. Yeah, just all of a sudden the screen changed. <laughs> well, anyway, is that 48 counties decide to hand count and so that took us to a situation that we we're going to focus on the 24 counties that we're not hand counting. Now, I look at it this way. I got 72 suspects in Wisconsin, 48 decide that they're going to go ahead and do a hand count and to verify their election. And the other 24 suspects says, heck no, I don't want to do that. But I'll say this. In most cases, it's as fast to hand count than it was using the DS. Uh, 200s. John? Uh, they do go in and separate the ballots and they match the numbers with how many people voted vote by mail, how many voted at a precinct. If there's one off, they got a good system, do a drawdown and they investigate. But then what they didn't do in these 24 counties is to count the ballots that are left like money. Here's a pile of ones, let's say those are Hillary's. Here's a pile of fives, let's say that's uh, Trump's votes. And then the next pile is a tens. And if they had done that, they could have done it as fast as the machines were. Because one thing I noticed with the DS200 precinct scanner, that it's very slow. Go ahead, jump on in. I, I just want to make sure it's, it's clear for our viewers. When you're talking about hand counting, they're taking the, the ballot one by one, the paper ballots, and counting the votes off the paper ballots. When you're talking about a machine count, they have these scanners that are normally used in the precinct, often the ES200, I believe. And they're taking the ballots, and they're not looking at the ballots and counting. They're putting the ballots back into the scanner, letting the scanner count, which is how they were originally counted, and you're not getting any new information that way. Uh, I just so people understand what the big difference is there, and go on. Well, I'm glad you clarified that, because those scanners only count 12 ballots per minute, because, you know, they are creating a digital image, okay? Yeah. And you can hand count as fast. But, and, and, and before they do put it into the machine, they've already counted how many ballots there are, they've separated them, and all they had to do was make these other piles and count them. Real simple. But they refused to do it. And that turned out to be 50% of the state vote was not hand counted. And it was easy for suspects or somebody who'd done something wrong to say, hey, I'm going to machine count because I want to get away with something. Because, you know, we know that when they do a machine count, they're using the same machine, they're using the same program, except what they do is that they delete everything else off the database that they're building, that they're uh, setting up. Okay. Hey, John, we're going to take just two seconds here to make sure no one else calls during the live stream and put a do not disturb on okay. the call. And, uh, I'm going to try. And we're not going to lose you. It's popping up there. Mm. All right. Oh, oh, get that back up. You have to turn the phone the other way. The other way. The other way. Oh, there we go. And then swing it up. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Yep, let me bring it. There you go. Okay, sorry for that interruption, but we're trying to avoid interruptions. <laughs> Perfect. Um, okay, so there are hand, some counties are hand counting, some are using the same scanners that were, they used before. Did they give any reasons why they wanted to scan, re, just rescan the counties that were doing that? You know, we confronted them on it and they said it's their choice. The law allowed it, and that's just tough luck. That's the way it is. 
And some people would say, gee, I voted for it, but I was over, you know, they have a commission. And, uh, and they decided not to. Well, you know, if I was guilty, I would decide not to hand count either. Okay, and then it happened to be some of the counties that have some of the biggest problems. Okay, and one was particularly very offensive was Waukesha, which is the same county five years ago that they walked in, I think, with 12 or 14 or 15,000 votes after the election that they say they supposedly found in the basement on that big judge's race. In fact, when we were there, it was kind of interesting, you know, the first couple of days. Nothing was getting done at all in Waukesha. And this lady turned around and said to Chris, you know what's going on here, don't you? And she said, well, what? Well, we have a saying around here. And, uh, and, and Chris said, well, what's that? He says, if it's election time and you're in Wisconsin and you're having problems, you're Ben Waukesha. And, uh, <laughs> and, and Waukesha happens to be, the I think, the third largest county in the state, highly Republican and uh, and it was the, at the end they wound up bringing an 850 in, which uh, because they felt so far behind, and uh, and and an Waukesha was the worst. An 850 being what? What's that again? An 850 being what? Well, that, that would be the ESNS DS850 Central Count, seven thousand ballots per hour machine, and uh, and they just wound up dumping ballots on it. Uh, you know, and running it through the machine and let them and let that machine sort it out. What I'm saying is, it was bull. Okay, yeah, it yeah. was a bad way to do it. We have the right to look at every ballot, and we didn't. Okay, and in part of Milwaukee, the same thing happened. Milwaukee is where I uh, on a Saturday night after being in town only a couple of days. You know, it was late. Uh, it was our I think our second trip in. And uh, we were able to get with some of the high officials on the canvas board, which was the head clerk. And me and Chris were talking to him. And I said to the clerk, I said, uh, can I ask you a quick question? I said, when your results come in from the DS200 and are sent to the EMS, which is the election management system, I said, how do you do that? Do you use a soft shoe network? Do people, Republican, Democrat, do you use a phone modem that you plug in? Or do you use a SIM card? And he said, SIM card. And all of a sudden I go, oh my God. You know, I, I didn't, I, Blina, go ahead, jump in. A SIM card being a, a, a card, electronic card that the computer would use to use a cell phone network to call into the county. Yes, exactly the case. And uh, uh, it was... Uh, you know, when he, when he first told me, I didn't want to believe it. Uh, I remember walking away and saying to Jim, this is just unreal. It really is. To Chris, I should say, and then calling Jim right away because I knew this is Jim's expertise. Because this is not the first time we've encountered these kind of problems before, uh, only in a very small level. Because, you know, in Maricopa, we caught a guy who was programming. Uh, he had his laptop connected into the central computer. And he had a, uh, a device to encrypt things, and he only did two counties. The fourth largest county in the United States is Maricopa County, and he was Arizona. It. Yeah, in Arizona. But he was also doing uh, Sequoia in Cook County, Illinois. Okay, this would be back in about 2010. And we reported because we knew that in no circumstances are these systems supposed to be used on the internet, okay? And that cell modem that, that they're using, they were. So to continue with the story, uh, I went to Waukesha, we found them there, did not see them. We went back to Milwaukee County, and uh, this very nice lady who uh, was a high official, she was walking down the aisle of the machines, and I said, hey, can I walk with you? Could you please give me a tour of these DS200s? And could you show me how they modem in the results? Because I understand that you sell modems. Could you show me that? So uh, I took out my camera. I was getting pretty excited, you know, and she opened up the back door, and there was a, a cellular kind of small phone, like, built into it, and then she pulled up the antenna, and, the, and she said, oh, look, the antenna is broken, and it was a same kind of antenna that you would find on a, on a uh, router, is what it really was. And, uh, and boy, I, I wish I had gotten pictures of that. I didn't. I thought I... I got what they call buck fever and just didn't quite shoot it. 
at all. In fact, I took a picture of the sideways, you know. But it was startling to know that this is how these connections are. And then knowing the ESNS in this country, Jim, controls over 60% of the marketplace of these votings. And, you know, the whole systems are, are changing from mark sensor technology. You know, that's the same technology that you and me were in school when we took the Iowa test and you filled in the bubble. And then uh, you probably will know more than I do because you're more geeky than I am uh, to this new system of ballot imagery, which I prefer a lot more. And I'll go into that later. Yeah. So what did you uh, you discovered that it, it's phone home phone home time for precincts to the counties and I will I will emphasize that in California using wireless technology or the internet is just flat out forbidden by law because it's too darn dangerous it can be hacked too easily and uh, they're doing this they're using it wireless and internet in Wisconsin and so what results did you did you see did you see anything over time that was indicating that the votes were not as they should be? Yes, we did. And uh, it was interesting that in Racine County, there was this really sharp lady who worked there and uh, as an observer, and she brought clickers in. And, uh, and they were clicking off races, and, uh, and they found an exact type flip that possibly could be explained, maybe possibly not, but I guess uh, one person was clicking for Clinton, the other one was clicking for uh, for Trump, and the results exactly looked like they were flipped. But, you know, you're talking by five votes, okay? And we never really got to the bottom to find out on that particular one exactly how what happened there, but... You know, it was the blind leading the blind. All of a sudden, a recount happens. It's incredible to know that you're being attacked by the Trump campaign trying to shut it down. The Hillary people come in. They can't say nothing. All they can do is observe, you know, interesting enough. Okay? And uh, and so, basically, it, it really... Uh, was a uh, a cluster F, okay, now, all across the board. And here we got two teams running around uh, uh, trying to put it together. The Green Party, they never did anything like this. I mean, who would have expected they would have raised $7.3 million over that time period? It's astounding. All yeah. I know is, is this. They were cheated. The American people were cheated. I donated $29 to that recount, 161,000 other people. And all they wanted to know is that does our vote really count? And what it really comes down to, that every state, every county, okay, did not really deliver the style that we really want to see. And uh, you not everybody, you know, uh, you got 72 counties getting back to that. I suspect Waukesha had problems. I suspect Brown County really big. Milwaukee, you know, it's so huge. Uh, what happens if the machines, they shift a couple of votes one way or the other, okay? There was no faster, really, to machine count than it was to hand count. And that's why I made that video of a DS-200 counting ballots to show how slow it was to do that and to know that they sorted everything out ahead of time as well as they had. I feel cheated. I was on the phone with Jill Stein after being in town, and I said, you need to demand that they hand count or you want your money back. And in the closing, she came in again. We had another meeting. Uh, it's outrageous that they tried to charge $3.9 million, okay? Yeah. It's outrageous to know that precincts and wards in Michigan, that they have procedures put together to block our right to know. OK, by saying, oh, look, this this ward, there's a ballot missing. So now we go to the original total and we're not going to count that because, you know, fortunately, there's a, a, another great activist that I think a lot of who's a front linesman. And that was Ray Lutz. Ray was did Michigan, did some outstanding reports. And we were constantly in touch, you know, sharing what we're learning, because that's the whole process of something like this. When a recount happens, you count me run into it. Because that's when you see inside the beast. Yeah. You see the dirt and the slime and the stuff that goes on preventing the American people to know 
if their vote is counted, which is their voice. And I have no doubt in my mind that we have a serious problems and that we all have to wake up and do something. We had, this was essentially, for those who, who remember back to Florida in 2000, that was a massive set of stonewalling. And now we had it ex spread across Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Nevada, and Florida again, just five times. It didn't get as much publicity because the White House was probably not really in the balance, being held in the balance. But it got some and, and made people aware. It made me even more aware. I would have hoped that one of these states could have done it right. But we can't say that any one of the five did it right. And this is very disappointing. I'm very disappointed in the officials in those states who could have taken, seized the opportunity to do it right, and they didn't. And that's just just a problem. I will note that tomorrow, Jan Bendor of uh, the Michigan Election Reform Alliance is going to have a, a, um, a press conference. And we interviewed her two weeks ago, and she spoke about the concept that the the official meme, the official statement was that you cannot recount precincts that showed any problems. And she sent me an email yesterday, lengthy email, citing Michigan law and saying, no, <laughs> there's what they were saying was false. And the lawyers fumbled. They fumbled badly there. And, and it's there's a huge problem when lawyers get involved in in elections, election laws. Also, they're, they're doing other stuff, uh, corporate law, divorce law, something. They're getting pulled into election law, and they don't know what's going on. And they need people like you, John Brakey, and Jan Bendor, and, you know, Karen McKim, and Ray Lutz that, that have been around to, to help them navigate this, and they don't, and they don't, they very often don't listen. And so they fumbled badly in Michigan, and Jen's going to talk about that tomorrow and talk about it in detail. Um, look for Michigan Election Reform Alliance on Facebook, and, and you'll see it and see what she has to say. This is this is rather scandalous. Do you have anything else you want to say about these these recounts before we'll shift back into history? Well, I would say, uh, just reiterate what you said, it was certainly scandalous, okay? It's scandalous to know that uh, the FBI director can jump out and say that we have 50 states, we have uh, 50 systems, and they're all safe, and this stuff is never connected to the Internet, okay? And then you walk in and you find them, and it's a freaky feeling to know this. Yeah. And, uh, and to know that uh, maybe in this country right now, these machines... Uh, uh, in the thousands being used everywhere. In my state, they're being used. I find it interesting that in your state, they don't. But California. They, you don't need EAC. You do your own testing, okay? We, yeah. And you do a great job. I mean, I'll say this. You know, when your Secretary of State back in 2006, Deborah Bowen, who I just idolized, okay, when she graduated all of us from conspiracy theorist to conspiracy factualist because she did a top to bottom report she went ahead and brought experts to look at the source code they didn't have enough time to do it complete but i know one thing that came out of that is that we knew that we were voting on machines that are fatally flawed in fact we made a movie about it that people can find online on our site and it's free to download and watch and uh, it's called fatally flawed and it's about what we've been doing in arizona we, and, and i kind of want to go into that because what are we going to do next how are we going to go ahead and stop this? You know, I want to introduce some of the viewers out there to some of my legal friends, okay? My favorite <laughs> friend is called Mr. Mandamus, okay? The <laughs> Mandamus Act. You know, that act is really good, you know? Uh, uh, elections are about procedures. And what I've learned to do is to understand those procedures, to find those procedures manuals, and to go ahead and hold them accountable with them. And a mandamus is basically filing a complaint with the Superior Court and saying, Your Honor, can you please order these assholes to follow the law? And if you win, you get paid. And that's what a mandamus is. And 
and I think that Jen in Michigan is going to be getting into that. And, and that's where, you know, the future is. Because, you know, I, I've been in this long enough to know that the last time we had a cycle like this, that something like this happened, well, of course, it was 2000, but now we're in 2004, more people are woken up. Uh, you know, the media, if they've done anything, and if Trump, everybody knows that voter fraud is not what you, me, have feared all these years, Jim, have we? Okay? It's election fraud. And election fraud is not a voter. Election fraud could be a vendor. It could be an insider. And, you know, and I'll say this. When I, when I look at these things and I try to figure out how the heist was, I try to get it down to one or two people. In my state, I'll tell you a quick story, which I think is very important. In 2014, I uh, was invited to go into Santa Cruz County. It's a little border community, which I'm originally, my wife is from, and I lived there for many years, had a business down there. And I went ahead and sued them on a records request. They had to take them to court because they weren't giving me the records. And when I got, uh, when we got to court, we had to sue them. The election clerk was asked, who does the programming or setting up the database for the election. And I know that you're a geek, and I'm saying it wrong, okay? And, uh, you know, so go ahead and jump in there, what they're doing. From the You'll hear, the people will hear um, the phrase programming the database or programming the election. And I'm a real programmer. Uh, and so I hear that, and I think something else. So what they're doing is at this phase that, that, Actually, John discovered that the counties, and please, after I get done with the explanation, carry on with it. The counties are farming that out to to shadowy people okay. that nobody knows anything about. But at the beginning of, before the actual election, they take the central computer, the election management system, and they put in the information about which candidates are in which ballots and which precincts. And each of that is a f becomes a ballot definition file, and when people refer to programming the election, they're configuring and populating, putting in the names, they're configuring the, the ballot, how many races do we have, and then putting the names of the candidates, but they're populating that to go into the ballot definition file, and then that is being sent out very often on an electronic card, but maybe in Wisconsin, uh, over this phone modem, uh, it's being sent out to the precinct scanner, to the precinct voting machines, so that they know what they're dealing with, what the ballot should look like in that precinct. Okay, go on and tell us how you found okay, out what's going on. Okay, so basically, when this lady was on the stand, she said that she did all of that that you just explained, okay? <laughs> and all of us are going, wow, this is really something. We didn't know that she was that good, that she could build a, you know, you know, it's not that hard, really, to do, you know, but that she was doing it, and it turned out that she lied, okay? She wasn't. And what we found was is that there was a guy in my state who was doing about $2 million per election cycle. He was supplying the ballots to these small counties, too, okay? That was doing all of that in the configurations and populating the ballot and doing some testing and then send them the database, uh, sending them the database to load into the EMS, with all this population work that they did, setting it up. And uh, and he was doing it by phone modem, okay, because we know that from 2007. And uh, and he was being and doing all of this on a 1099, which is an IRS form, and, uh, and he was kind of hidden into the system. And so basically uh, he was beyond a records request. And if the systems were to break down, he would be able to come in and repair them by using a program like PC Anywhere because he had access. Basically, he was a gatekeeper. He also could have been uh, programming it to go ahead and use a fraction magic program. And he could have been also adjusting results because when the results come in from the precincts, that's the same phone line that he was working on to do all these things. And and that was uh, a really big problem. And so we won that lawsuit. Uh, from what I understand, he supposedly retired. Uh, and, of course, you know, you take this to government officials and they say, well, what's wrong with that? And, uh, and, and of course, I film everything and I have it on tape, uh, you know, just because some of the stuff that we uncover like this is pretty incredible. And, uh, and Pima County no longer for a long time 
you know, just another quick story. In 2006, there was an election between John Kyle and uh, Peterson. Senator John Kyle uh, was a senator from Arizona. Peterson was a developer. And they spent $29 million. And on that election, they were using phone modems. And when I got the databases after the trial, I went in there and looked at the poster log, and I found that out of 394 memory cards, all but four were loaded twice. First time I ever saw it, which meaning uh, that they, somebody could have been forking the database and playing around with it and then reloading the results instantly. You follow me? Yeah. Uh, in our state, believe it or not, we don't have poll tapes that they put at the precinct at the end of the election. You don't they, have? I had to sue them to make them sign them, okay? And it's just terrible how things were kind of like coming together because Arizona, in my opinion, has, was really a very much a test lab. And I'll say this, we've had tremendous good results that I'll go into later with you. Uh, I'll give you a chance to go ahead and or to, you know, go come back on what I just said. Well, with, with, all right, first of all, uh, a poll tape, explain what that is in case some people don't know. Well, it, it's, it's, it's off the, any precinct scanner produces the result at the precinct. And if you live in a good state, they before they do anything, they publish that tape, and then they put it in the wall for everybody to see. In Arizona, they hide them. This is a list of how many votes each candidate got on right. that machine. And in California, they're required to be posted. And you want to three, three times. For three days. For three days. Uh, and you want to... One good thing people can do on election night if their state does this is to go and take a photo or video of that tape because it should be publicly posted and then start to take a video of that and compare with what's being announced for that county for that precinct later on if it's being announced. But this is one of the places where you, you need to check that what they're saying is happening is what they said was happening over in the precinct. Uh, and, and that Arizona isn't doing this is I mean, it's shocking. It's, it's just not part of putting in checks and cross-checks. I like to use the word redundancy uh, on all of this. So we have a couple ways to check everything, and that's just not happening. Uh, so you found, I mean, what was... Um, what was shocking to me, although I had an idea it existed, but you have been doing an enormous amount of re research over the years. And this is something now that people who are getting into f defending democracy can do over the next few years is to start asking their counties, who's doing work for you? Who is getting contracts to do what? Because... John, you found out, you started to hit yeah. into this network, the shadowy network we didn't know about. And I think that's one of your biggest findings, and that's in the sixth chapter of uh, Fraction Magic on Bev Harris's website, blackboxvoting.org. Um, why don't you explain Fraction Magic and how, that, for example, that might have been used in Wisconsin or maybe not? Walk people through that, because that's uh, yeah. yet another yeah. way to, to exactly. fiddle with the data. Go ahead. Totally, totally. And it starts off, you know, if you're running fraction magic, of course, it's a way of weighting the results. And, and you know, if you think your vote is a whole vote, you know, one vote, one person, okay, well, you're wrong, okay? Because if only, nine, let's say, 99 people come to vote, and you have to have fractionalization because you want the numbers to roll up, to roll down, to make 99, okay? Uh, you know, and, and the thing with the system is you can build it into uh, the system. Well, first off, you know, nobody really knows these programs that we're really voting on because they're secret programs, yeah. okay? And because they're secret, there are back doors and things built into it. And this ingenious man from Memphis, Tennessee, okay, named Benny Smith, a uh, wonderful person. It was a, a experience meeting him at Mimi Kennedy's house and shooting the video, is that when he showed how it worked, I go, oh, my God, 
this is what I've been looking for for a long time because I knew that they had a device. Because we were, me and Jim March, we go back a long ways, and Mickey Donahoe and Bill Reisner, we were speculating, and all of a sudden he discovers and loads on a thumb drive a program that plugs right into the central computer, okay, and it controls every precinct by precinct by precinct and that you can enter in the results that you want to see and it will all add up perfect at the very end and and the thing that went after he showed it he had me running it two or three minutes because i understood the program uh and so then i said well i really want to know how fast i can derig because in Arizona, we got these little tiny Mickey Mouse little hand counts we do, okay? And I'm always fighting them. I'm always fighting them. Hey, you cannot pull do the lottery drawing until you commit the result by precinct, okay? Now, yeah. we haven't looked at the poll tapes, right? And, and in Maricopa, which is, you know, the largest 61% of the state vote, they try to do the lottery election night or the next day and they don't want to commit the precinct result because once you do the lottery, you can walk back and within a minute restore the results to that one precinct that you pulled. Explain what you mean by lottery. It's a random selection of precincts. Well, it, we, they get together and they put a uh, all the precinct numbers in a, in a basket and you go in and you draw and it's a very small, my, minute hand count that on a presidential election will count that. We'll also count a senatorial race, and and they do this by lottery drawings, okay? okay. And uh, to select, and it's supposed to be like in Maricopa. Uh, if there's a, if at one time there was a thousand thirty four precincts, I guess we would pull something like thirteen or fourteen precincts to be hand counting certain little Mickey Mouse races, and uh, and so basically. It's important that they're able to derig real quick, and I, and that's what I found that that was the easiest part of running Fraction Magic was to restore a precinct back to its original count, that they would find nothing. Okay, okay. It's a trick. It's it's a trick. You you rig it and then you unrig it. Yeah, me and Jimmy sued on this. I want you to know we won. We won. Hey, Maricopa bought me a new truck. You know, one thing that if we all learn how to be good. <laughs> gadflies, okay, social gadflies, and, and we can train is that, you know, uh, what's my job as an election transparency activist? My job is to take away their impunity. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to do that by records request. I'm going to make them follow procedures. I'm going to make them paranoid. I'm going to catch them. Because they only steal if they have impunity. Nobody is watching. And that's why we need to build an army of gadflies, yes. social gadflies. That's why we need to be able, because we've got to take that impunity away from them. And I know that I've done that. In my state, okay, before Election Day, I had 11 counties under threat that if they destroyed the ballot images, that they would be charged with a Class 6 felony. Why do I want those images? Because fraction magic can only change the numbers. It cannot change the images. I'm in trial on a case right now that we put in two parts. I mean, when you learn to be a good gadfly and you haven't got a lot of money, you don't take a case and throw everything at them. You break it into small parts because that's less expensive. And why make a double argument in court? My argument is, Your Honor, uh, and the judge explained it real well with these images when the judge turned around and said at the end of the case, he said to defense, well, let me ask you a question, Pima County. If you took my ballot and then you made a photocopy of that ballot and then you used the photocopy to count... What makes you think you could destroy the chain of custody and destroy the ballot image, the photocopy? And the other side went, blah, 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 because they didn't know what to say. <laughs> and then they came up with a defense saying, oh, my God, if people get those images, they can put a mark on it. And then they can sell it for $20. You know what I call that? I call it vote by mail. Okay? <laughs> because 80% of my state is vote by mail. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, this is the insanity. But to really, you know, uh, to me, is to be able to share this with other people. That's why I think what you're doing is very important. And that's where I'm hoping that in the next six weeks there's going to be a conference somewhere in this country. We're going to find a place to have a good retreat. We're all going to get together and we're going to learn the tricks to work now 
for the 2018 election. We're going to go ahead and learn to be somewhat of a lobbyist, uh, somewhat of somebody who's going to go ahead, you know, uh, what's the definition of a gadfly? Uh, uh, well, I'm proud to be a gadfly because I chase elections in transparency for the last 12 years. A gadfly is a person who interferes with the status quo. Well, my pit should be right there, okay, uh, of a society by proposing novel, uh, potentially upsetting questions like, hey, why can't you verify my vote? Why can't yeah. we have systems that are simple? And that's why these ballot images are important, because as Bev has honored me by calling it the breaky method, what is the breaky method? The breaky method is simple, is that we've got to take the black box and make it into a transparent box, Okay, yeah. and then we need to go ahead and have a system of trackability, chain of custody. And then the third part, which is the most important part, we must have elections that are publicly verified. And that means there's no reason why these ballot images cannot be sorted by precinct, put up online, okay, by precinct. And there's no reason why you can't download and maybe develop a small program to count, or you could go ahead and hand count. By using clickers with a small program out of, uh, made out of, uh, by, that was done in Wisconsin. Go ahead, add something to that, please. I, I think another one of the important discoveries you came with is the, the fact that, okay, a lot of, we, when you run a ballot through a scanner, the more modern scanners, apparently since 2012 or so, you know this better than I do, they take a photograph, a digital photograph of the ballot and keep that digital image and they, they then when they're counting the votes off of the ballot, they're really counting the votes off of the digital image and then they have the option of keeping that image in the machine which you can download to a thumb drive or something and potentially Jim March said we'll hand out to each of the parties involved in the election and let them uh, recount the vote. I mean, I, I, I heard a registrar, Carolyn Cernich from Humboldt County, say, you know, you have questions about the elections? Here, here's a copy of the ballots, count them yourself. And what you were finding out was how widespread, how extensive this is now that there are devices and it's not so much in California, but across much of the rest of the country, there are scanners that are keeping the images. And what is it that the officials are, are disabling the storage of those images? That's right. They certainly are. You know, if you go into the manual, and, and, and I hit all my counties, I said, you destroy these, okay? I'm going to make you do them again, okay? You got to rerun them. So you better save them. It's a class six felony in my state, you know, after this judge ruled and said, that they are part of the chain of custody. I mean, anybody who knows about police work knows how important chain of custody is. Uh, let's go to Ohio real quick, okay? You know, Bob Petrakis, before the election, had 15 counties that were using these uh, DS-850s, okay? They are destroying them all. He sued them, and they, then they said to him, well, we never turned it on, okay? Well, my God, then how do you count the ballot? Because like I said... When that ballot goes into the machine, it makes a copy. It makes an image. That's what the machine counts. And, and they were saying that they never turned it on. No. When they turn the switch off, they're saying destroy. And they're destroying because they're protecting the right to cheat now or in the future. And they were forced into this technology because the Mark sensor technology is extinct. Yeah, and we just had a question come in that, that's very relevant here. How do you recount the ballot images? There are two ways to do that. One, print them out and count them by hand, which gets you a lot of paper, but it's quite doable. Or the other is to have somebody write a program, uh, such as Mitch Trachtenberg did in Humboldt County, to... to um, uh, read, uh, a program to read the images and count the votes off of the image, and you do that automatically, much the same as the scanner originally is doing, but now you're having a second program written by somebody else to, to read those images. It's important when John's talking about chain of custody here to make sure and have some way of verifying that the ballot images 
are indeed accurate reflections of the actual balance. So part of an audit in this case would be to have the um, a, a bit of a verification checking actual images against actual ballots. In California, I, I've checked the, the Public Records Act, and these images, if they're there, they are not forbidden. They are public records. So somebody should be able to go in and ask for them as a public record. Uh, we don't have machines. I, I think when they're sent, the officials are saying, well, we turned that off, I think what they did is they turned off the storage of the image, the keeping of them. They have to have the image in order to read the votes off the image and then write that down and then they can destroy them. But um, this is this was for me this year new. Again, much of a thank you, John, for digging this up. And people need to, aside from finding out who the con counties are contracting out to, finding out if the images, if their scanner equipment is being is capable of keeping the images, then are the counties doing it? And then push to have those images made public. When you, when you say, uh, when you're talking about people marking the images so they could sell the ballots, well, what is it? You said Arizona is 70%, California is 50%. 80%. Yeah. California is 50%, and by 2020, it's going to be close to everybody will getting be getting up on their ballots. And we're going to have a problem with vote selling on a large scale and, and voter fraud, a, a, different, a real voter fraud. But a different way. A I mean, different you know, way. I've looked into this very heavily, and I'm very concerned. And, you know, if we could ever fix the machines and, and use Dr. Stark's method of auditing, you know, getting back to its ballot images, is that the 850, they removed the ink cartridge out of the machine. It's capable of encrypting the image with a unique number, because I have some, and then putting that same number on the ballot itself for auditing. This, the, this cast vote record is a wonderful document for being able to analyze. And it's just missing one thing, the hyperlink to the actual ballot. What do you mean and by cast so, vote record? That, well, the cast vote record is that the minute the ballot goes into the 850, the ES and SDS 850, the super fast scanner counter, central count used, is that it lifts the text right off and then puts it into a single cast vote record. And that cast vote record can be put into an Excel sheet. I have one here that has 474,000 rows, okay? It has one row for each voter. And it's the first time that I've ever been able to go ahead and sort things by precinct because when they run vote by mail here, they don't sort it. They just run it through the machine and they let the computer do the sorting and give yeah. us the totals. Now, I can, uh, once I win the next part of the case, I will be able to sort the ballot images and everything and then randomly pull a precinct to verify. And by doing that, the hacker does not know what the hell we're going to check. And that's how you take away impunity well, hopefully for using this system. And then, after you get all done, you're not done random checking until you randomly go back and then pull a couple of these images and then match them against the original ballots because, yeah. you know, there could be photoshopping, there could be programs. You know, power will find a way to steal. It's up to us gadflies to go ahead and challenge on every front and get involved. And that's why we do need to form an association. And I want to call it something like the Socrates Society of Social <laughs> Gadfly, because the first Gadfly was Socrates. Yes, somebody who asks questions, especially of authority. Uh, just a, a little note here. Generally, those images, it depends on the format of the image. I'm a techie here. A PNG image, once you have the image, it's secure and they can't fiddle with it. The problem is that in creating the image and that step from looking at the, for the machine to look at the ballot and create the image, that could be photoshopped. And that's why it's really important to put a number on the ballot, a unique number on every ballot that's being scanned and having that copied over to the image and to the cast vote record because if 
you have a question about the ballot, uh, about the image, something you're seeing on the image, you need to go back to the ballot. And I will just mention that about 10 years ago, I, I was asked to observe uh, or help us check the this vote with KPFA radio, and they put all of their image, all their ballots online. And the very first image I looked at, the very first one had a smudge. And that smudge got counted. Yeah. And that just opened my eyes. I said, this is the way you do it. You put all the images out there and let anybody look at it. And that very first image, and about 15% of the balance, these were a bit complicated. And they, they, the program that was written to read the ballots was written by an amateur. And about 15% of them were wrong. And they wound up having to recount the entire thing by hand because the, the program wasn't doing a very good job. But that opened my eyes to the importance of getting these images, and, and each of the images had a number, and the ballots had a number. And I, I said, okay, well, this ballot number 123 has a smudge on it. And they were able to go back and look and say, yeah, it's got a smudge. Now look at the cast vote record. It got counted. So this is yeah. these details are important. These details are important, and we need to get better at this. Almost to a professional level, it would be wonderful if we could get paid to do audits at some point. The county sh election officials should not be auditing themselves. Exactly the case. Totally agreed. Nobody does. No bank does that. They bring in independent auditors, and what we're doing is letting the county audit themselves, and that's another problem. Let me go back to being a gadfly for a, a moment, and you're okay. very good at that. And, um, and I do it with civility. That's an important part. You know, really, I teach the seven C's, and what are the seven they? C's are very, very, very important. Character. What kind of a character am I? My capacity. My credibility. That's real important. What am, what am I selling? At the very end, it's credibility, isn't it? Okay. Then you add to it civility. You know, uh, there's a lot of times these people want to attack me, beat me. I mean, I'm sorry, they've arrested me a couple of times, okay, and I've won them all. And, and, and when I get them to lose their civility, I really win. Yeah. I'll never yeah, yeah. lose mine, okay? And then the next one is citizenship. I'm using my citizenship, my rights. And the love of my country. And I look at these six C's because, you know, what kind of a character has the capacity to make something up and spread these conspiracy theories? Hey, I'm a conspiracy factualist. I deal in facts, okay? <laughs> and, and I think this whole process through. But the most important C at the very end is to have the courage to stand up and be that gadfly. Yeah. And to have to go ahead and stand up in a board of supervisors. Hey, you know, I have a lot of people I work with. And if you want to meet with me, I'll be in court tomorrow at 3 o'clock with Bill Reisner, working with a case on him on corruption that's massive. Okay? Uh, that's where you can meet with me or at the board of supervisors meeting. Because there's too many people who like to be able to go to a meeting and uh, criticize and do something, go home, and they think they may change. No, 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 no. Yeah. no we got to get on the front lines. Our country is in severe, severe trouble. we got to learn how to take that impunity away from these people who steal, because they steal with impunity. I know that uh, quite a few elections that, well, let's put it this way. Last November, I caught them trying to steal an $800 million bond election. And you want to hear this? I got it on film. Amen. I have it on film. Amen. Okay, and uh, because I helped pass a law back in 2008 with a, a Republican senator, because I'll say this, the work I do, you'll find me working with everybody, because that is our voice. We end disputes. Democracy is built on four boxes. I'm on one right now, the soapbox. I'm preaching about it, right? <laughs> you know, yes. the second box. What is that? That is the ballot box. You go vote. And the third box is the jury box. And I'll fight in there all day long. But you'll never find me in the fourth box. I always go back to the beginning. I'm the soapbox box again. Because the fourth box is the cartridge box. And that is a revolting thought. Okay? And in our country, you know, uh, we have been known to do crazy things like have civil wars or big disputes. 
disputes or whatever. And uh, and we all have to pull together. And, you know, uh, this whole thing for 12 years for me is uh, has been uh, quite an ordeal. Uh, the first six months when I fell down that rabbit hole, I went to see a psychiatrist because I didn't want to believe what I found. Okay? It was that damaging. Yeah, I'd wake up yeah. in the morning and say, no, no, this can't be true and every time there's a break oh good it's not true ah, thank god I and mean, this only happens in latin america third world countries no we're turning into a banana republic and a dangerous one i talked to, to newbies and, and they're shocked at some of the things they're they're seeing and hearing and i just say well just wait it's going to get worse and it does get right. worse and it takes it took me six months to start to get on top of it I, I want to add maybe another C into your list of C's is continuity because I don't think people understand you can't just go into a protest or speak it helps to speak before the board of supervisors but you've put in an awful lot of professional grade work digging into this stuff thousands of hours and People have to be ready to do that research and be careful about it and be scientific, not jump to conclusions. I'm seeing right. you're seeing way too many people out there jumping to the conclusions and speculating that, oh, he stole this and she stole that because it just makes sense. Well, no, that's not good enough. And what you've been doing and Bev Harris and Ray Lutz has been doing is spending thousands of hours or hundreds of hours on any one action, maybe thousands, digging into stuff and coming up with much better, much harder evidence of how it could be done and how it is being done. How much help did you need from lawyers to do all this? Well, I got a number of lawyers that I work with, I tell you, you know, and uh, some I'll never use again. Some I will use over because sometimes you have to sue just because you got to leave a record that we tried. Like, for example, you know, when I did that lawsuit, I sued the whole state of Arizona over the primary. And, um, I got 150,000 people were suppressed. The results looked like crazy. You know, Hillary Clinton wins the vote by mail by 60%. Bernie wins the precinct vote by 60%. And I look at those as pollsters. And then on the provisional, he wins by 63 that's a 40-point spread. That says something is really wrong and something's got to be looked at. And the numbers were easy to do. You didn't need a mathematician, even though I did bring in a mathematician, to confirm my numbers because every whole state's up 9%. Maricopa's down 4%. Well, gee, how could that be? Unless there was major voter suppression, not enough precincts opened up, and then something going wrong with the vote by mail. Uh, you know, all of this adds up to the fact that we're in trouble and we're going to have to all learn to be what I wear. I wear a button everywhere I go. You know what that button says? It's be the we. That means we the people, folks. Yeah. Okay? We are the check and balance. We are the ones that hire these people. And we have good laws that we need to go ahead and force. Now we need to go ahead and say, gee, can we put together a society of uh, uh, social grad flies that know how to do the research and can be trained to be paralegals. You know, when I go to a, a, a lawyer with the case, they know that me and Jimmy or me and somebody else, we're gonna, our team's going to put together a heck of a case because it's the same thing over and over again. You know, it's a mandamus or it's a public records request suit, and then you go right in, and they're special actions. They don't cost that much. I sued the whole state of Arizona, and I think we did it for under $12,000. Didn't win, but we left a hell of a record, and we woke up a country to what we found. When you started this and you walked into a courthouse to file a suit, did you have a lawyer with you, or did you just win? No, I was scared to death. It's a funny story. I was going to challenge the 2004 election. And I walked into the courthouse and I called Bill Rice, who never talked to him before. And he says, well, I think you need to come see me first. It's going to be kind of difficult, the challenge from here. But I wanted a form. I wanted a challenge because I knew what I found was very severe. I knew that's why I brought Jim March in, because what I had found in that precinct back in 2004, okay, was a trick and a switch and a hack and a stack. You can Google that. I'm not going to try to explain it, but it was an incredible story of how they were setting up a precinct in case there was an audit, you could audit this. 
they had four people going through filling out ballots. Okay, and after we realized what we'd caught through interviews, and and I went back the next morning because Greg Ballot said, "Hey, you know, uh, you should go back to the precinct and check the garbage." Well, I didn't find nothing in the garbage, but I did find these little tiny slips, and they were coded. And I was able to figure the code out, and then through the records request, and I did this with a guy named Dr. David Griskin, which is just a fabulous guy. He's living in Mexico now. Yeah. I think you might have met him. And uh, he told the whole story about this whole thing, and we worked a thousand hours figuring it out. We took it to the feds. We took it to John McCain. We took it to uh, the Democratic Party, and nothing ever happened with it, and it's a shame, but we didn't give up. We just found other ways to do it, and then fortunately... This attorney, Bill Reisner, who's really been my mentor, who's taught me to be a paralegal, has taught me how to be able to approach these cases and the basics. And it's something that's teachable that we can do all over the country because the work starts now for 2018. We're seeing that across the country. We're seeing citizens, uh, I believe Ray Lutz initially just walked into the courthouse and filed suit without a lawyer. And then he went and got a lawyer. And uh, Ralph Lopez in Massachusetts, that's same well, Ralph, thing. Well. Yep. Uh, either Ralph Lopez or somebody else from Election Justice there just went in and started filing a lawsuit yeah. uh, without going to the lawyers. You're going to need the lawyers. You want to find good, helpful lawyers. But one of the things I've learned this year is you don't necessarily have to have a high-priced lawyer to get this thing started. And That's right. then you you got people on the stand who admitted, and you would have only found this out by getting them on the stand, that they were using these, these questionable outside contractors. Yes, exactly the case. That's how you learn. And stay with it, folks. This is, this is going to be decades. It's not going to happen overnight, even though many of us understand many of the things that need to be done. I was writing a memo to somebody last night, and I said, there's a hundred gaps that we have to plug up. And we have to plug them up one by one, and try to prioritize and figure out what's the most important and do that. And uh, Much of my thinking is, which has the most... We're going to be proposing some laws in Sacramento over the next month, and what has the most national impact is one of the things we consider. It's not just about California, but because California is a huge state, Absolutely. we, we can change important. the market and we can change the way the things are, are happening. I want to get sort of wrap up here. Um, what would you like to see, what changes would you like to see most of all over the next five to ten years in Arizona or across the country to for our elections? What's the most important targets? I was saying prioritize. What are your priorities? Well, my priorities are pretty simple. Okay. For you know, first off, right away is these ballot images and making elections transparent, trackable and verifiable. At least take care of the machines and then focus in on the vote by mail, which I really have big problems with. Yeah. Because people don't realize that four billion dollars in two thousand two wasn't all for machines. Two billion went into these statewide databases. And these statewide databases are being used against us because they hooked to a commercial database. In 2006, I think the LA Times wrote an article, uh, does the GOP know if you don't like anchovies? What they're referring to, do you like anchovies on your pizza? Okay, they take that database, merge it with others, and here we are 10 years later, okay, 2016, they got Google, they got Facebook, they broke the back door in through the van database, okay, and they know how we're voting, and they're, they're micro-targeting. Okay, yeah. you walk in, you think you're a Democrat in California, and you find out that you belong to the Libertarian Party or something, and you cannot cast a ballot. Okay, these are serious problems. They know that you, you know, they're using algorithms. They, they know that if you left California, you moved to New York, and you registered to vote, maybe somebody has your signature on file. Uh, with some company, and this is no huge conspiracy. My God, in San Diego, I learned from their little video about their Whitney Bow that does the vote by mail that they know instantly uh, when a ballot comes in, then they mailed you a second one, and the first one just showed up. It shows me that it's live and connected. 
Final, my final dream is what Bob Petrakis, Harvey Wiseman, and others have said that and that we count votes by hand. Eventually, it's a holiday, okay, and it's a national celebration of our democracy. And we get all this crummy money out of politics. And, the, and you know, I, I'm, I'm talking fantasy, possibly, but you know, you have to have dreams. Because you know, I'm a grandfather. I'm concerned for my grandchildren. I know what hopelessness is, and it does look a little hopeless, and, if, and I won't accept that. I work for hope and love to make these things come on because, you know, uh, in life, you know, uh, I've got a rear good rear view mirror, and I guess I was just, a, like, again, a natural-born gadfly. And sometimes it's good to be ADD and dyslexic, you know? <laughs> We had a couple questions coming in, uh, one of which, uh, what do you think about the chances, feasibility of, of recounting the primaries? Well, I tell you right now is that, uh, hey, I'm fighting for that. Okay, I'd like to know what happened in that primary. You know, I sometimes wonder if this whole election cycle wasn't a huge PSYOP operation because it was the outsider. And somebody definitely did a number on Sanders. Uh, I covered, I canvassed the whole state just quickly. Massachusetts, 351 municipalities, okay? I've done Massachusetts twice before the primary. I knew that there was 68, really 72 counties that had counted. So I took all the results, spread them on a spreadsheet, okay? And I found that Bernie Sanders lost the whole state by 1.42%. But in these 68 municipalities, which equal 2% of the state vote, he won by 17.9%. He did not win one college town. He lost everywhere with the machines, where, you know, mainly, I guess, in uh, Boston, of all places, where he did the worst. And, uh, and I found funky things going on the little time I spent in the vote by mail. Uh, in the absentees, and it looked like there was a tremendous ballot harvesting effort going on. And I don't know if, because we never get to look at the programs, if it was rigged or not. Uh, inquiring minds want to know, and we shouldn't have to wonder. And so that's kind of how I stand on it. I uh, think yes, I want to look. You want to look? I don't know that we're going to be able to. Um, Mr. Sanders would have helped if he had started to ask for recounts back then, and that yes. didn't happen. Uh, having Jill Stein was important to get the recounts in Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin because her name was on the ballot. In California, any voter can go in and pay for a recount. Any voter. Your name doesn't have to be on yeah. the ballot, so check your state. We're getting some questions about various entities, government agencies hacking Georgia and DNC yes, and all of that. I think we're going to address that later with people Good. who have better expertise than I, agree. I do. Well, I've heard the same thing. Here's the same. Um, and that's, that there's a lot of debate that I'm seeing on that, and I think we're going to hold that off and try to get some people who really have the expertise to address that. My final question is, you're doing fabulous work. I mean, bravo. And you're doing a lot of work. How can we help you? Well, uh, you know, uh, I'm pretty, pretty quick. I need to give my lawyer a bunch more money, and I need to raise money for the lawsuit and because uh, we want to go into depositions. And uh, right now, uh, we just got the reply, and we're thinking about deposing the elections director over these ballot images, and they're still making the argument that somebody can sell his vote. Well, we want to depose him, and we want to get him on tape. And uh, I think that's a short run. And I think the other thing people can help is watch what we're doing. When we get ready to try to form this society of uh, social gadflies and training, uh, we really want to have a good retreat. We want to go ahead and build a pretty powerful team. Uh, we want to be able to have people on the end of a line and as, uh, that can help as lawyers to do things. Uh, this is what we got to do, folks. You know, Jimmy would say, a little more colorful, but, you know, hey, uh, send the lawyers, send the gadflies, and send the money. And we got to put something together and build that program. And I know, Jim, that I know I'm going to count on you being a big part of it because I know that you're a gadfly, too, in a different way. Different way. Uh, I'm there. Uh, you are. I'm there. I'll be there in Sacramento. That's where I do most of my, my stuff. That's part of being a gadfly. you got to yeah. get in there again. 
Your website is electionnightmares.com, and they can donate over That's there? Certain. Yes, they can. And right now, if they were to donate, they want to direct it at our project, is that uh, I've loaned out my uh, PayPal account to uh, uh, was it Recount Now. And so if you do donate, make a donation and then put 49 cents on it. That means it's directed at the Arizona Project. So if somebody was to use our PayPal account, and, uh, they could direct it by putting the amount with a 49 cent, and then that way we can differentiate it. And uh, pretty soon I think they'll have theirs, but I loaned it to them because uh, it was the right thing to do. And they're yeah. great people. And I'm part of Recount now. I'm part of, uh, I'm part of all the groups because I want to teach. Yeah. I want, we got to do what we're doing here everywhere. I mean, hey, Arizona was their test lab, and I've taken it apart with other people. Yeah. It's fat. Hey, the fourth largest county in the United States, a friend of mine, it's going to be the head of the elections. Wow. Good. Okay. That's, that's huge progress. Yeah. That's and and I work. know he can go off the shelf with a lot of stuff. And that we can work together building a system that is transparent, trackable, and publicly verified. Not just verifiable, but actually verified. And I think that's something verified. that that's what we want. Came, came out in the primaries is that Wisconsin was verifiable, but it wasn't verified. Michigan was verifiable, it wasn't verified. And, and so we have to push that extra step. People can find out more about our legislative work uh, by going onto Facebook for and look for the Voting Rights Task Force there. We have a California page and a federal page, and there's going to be activity next year. Uh, we hope that you take a look there and follow the announcements and discussion that's going to go there because there may be federal legislation next year. And my sense is this is the first opportunity we've seen in years to actually push Washington to start doing the right thing. And finally, if you like these broadcasts, if you like our, our, our series of weekly broadcasts, please go to, from the California Election Integrity Coalition, Bert, Balance for Bernie and the Voting Rights Task Force, go to GoFundMe.com slash TakeBackTheVote. And, and make a donation there. We need to uh, raise the level of our broadcast to make all of this work better. Um, and your small donation will be a big help to, to make, make these broadcasts better. And I think we will also be contributing to a conference uh, hopefully soon. And I'll look very much to seeing you there. Thank you, John Brakey. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, do. Please keep up your great work. And that is teaching everybody how to be the we again. Yes. That's how we're going to take it back. <laughs> be the people. Amen. Be the we, folks. Amen. Thank you, John. Thank you.